shiny friends. I'm here with you today to talk about exactly why I started a YouTube channel. About a year and a half ago, my youngest daughter told me about some YouTubers that she had been watching. I started listening to what she had to say to just kind of evaluate exactly who she was watching. Did not want her to be spending a lot of time listening and, you know, watching another family, so to speak if I didn't particularly care for their walk in life. We sat down on one Saturday and she started showing me all these different videos that this family had made. I just immediately fell, fell in love with them and realized exactly you know, how she had been drawn to watching. I really had not been into watching YouTube channels per se. So it kind of became a regular ritual that in the afternoons when she would get in the car, we would watch their video because this particular family would upload like every day about three o'clock or either we would watch it on TV when we got home. But some days she would go ahead and start playing in the car and I would listen. And I wouldn't necessarily watch because I'd be drawing, but, but I would listen. Anyway, that particular family is, if you've never been exposed to them, I will enlighten you on that. But if you already have been, you'll know exactly where I'm coming from. It is Roman Atwood. Smile more. Roman Atwood's family. It's him and Brittany and their son Noah and Kane, and they are actually expecting a baby girl this year. Um, as time went on, I watched them and I still really didn't get like the whole YouTube realm. I mean, like I couldn't understand like how he got into it or, you know, exactly like what kept pushing him forward to do it. But like I said, I watched uh, a full year and I still to this day I'm watching. So that's where it leads into the year and a half. So after watching them, I just kind of grew to it and everything. So as the beginning of this year, 2017, I began praying to the Lord, show me guidance where he wanted to redirect me as the new year started as far as like the different things that I was involved in. My daughter had moved away to college in fall of 2016, so I still was kind of adjusting to her being away. In the years prior, I had been serving on a ladies ministry, mom's ministry at my church. Over last summer 2016, I heard him speak clearly to me to kind of step back. I didn't even really realize where he was redirecting me at the time. I was just listening to him at that moment. Also that summer, I released my second self-published book under contract, Life in the Middle of Dream. If you haven't checked it out, you can find it on Amazon. So once those kind of things started taking place, and like I said, I began praying extremely more in depth at the beginning of 2017, I really sensed him guiding me to take a, a break, being that like I released some, the, my book last summer and I also held an auction in October for raising money for a liver cancer foundation, the Fibromyalgia Cancer Foundation. If you follow me, you know that I'm a liver cancer survivor. It was just like a lot of things that were kind of going on at one time and then the holidays rolled around and we had Christmas and everything. and so. The new year was, you know, fresh to me, and I usually don't set, like, New Year's resolutions, but I'm always intrigued to listen to where he's guiding me. Well, something just really came over me. I sensed him pulling me away from social media in the sense of Facebook. Like, he was pulling me back from Facebook. I didn't delete my account. I didn't get on there and post a message of, hey, I'm stepping away for a while or, you know, whatever. What I simply did was deleted my app from my cell phone. I say deleted, let me back up on that. My husband gave me money for Christmas to get a new cell phone. When I got a new cell phone in, in the first couple weeks of January, I never uploaded the app onto my cell phone or if it came on there, I deleted it. I can't remember exactly, but anyway. I was really enjoying not having Facebook because I felt like every time I'm carrying my phone around, it's like, you know, when you're not busy or you're waiting in carpool line, you're just sitting and scrolling. And I mean, just like looking at nothing. So I didn't ever put it on there and I was really enjoying it. And I would allow myself per se to like in the later afternoon when say I'd be cooking dinner or something, 
I would have my iPad out. I still had the app on there and I'd get on there and kind of check in because I am involved in a couple of little different groups that I like to kind of keep and check with. I was keeping up mainly with those, but as time went on, more and more I was not getting on there. And I just began feeling very refreshed. I mean, it wasn't like it was the first thing I was waking up thinking about in the mornings anymore. I wasn't, you know, Every time I left a store, scrolling through it, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I was really struggling with it. I mean, like, my head was in it too much. And then, not only was my head planted in it looking, then my mind started wandering and with different things. And I've always struggled with the comparison issue, and that's something that I've struggled with in the past. I even remember as a child doing it. And if you've ever dealt with that, you know what I'm talking about. And even though like we know and we've found that place in our life where we are content in Christ and we know that kind of thing, Satan still, you know, he loves to run around, steal your joy and that kind of thing. So I just really felt him refreshing me through that journey and I'm still um, actually enjoying it. So I, I was like, all right, Lord, you know, what are you trying to show me? I was like, well, do I need to start really getting involved in creating several more art pieces to place in a shop somewhere? Or do I need to prepare for an art gallery or fill my Etsy shop even more so than it has been in the past? You know, like, Lord, what are you trying to show me? Because I want to be able to use my gifts and my skills during the day, like when my family is away, so I can continue to shine a light in others' lives. And... He had kind of been putting on my heart about maybe creating some t-shirts with some particular words or, you know, things that I had kind of been thinking about and stuff. So he directed me to start Googling to look at those and like see how people were creating them and like what software I would need and stuff like that. And I've worked with Photoshop before, but I don't currently have it on my Mac desktop. A couple years ago, whenever I switched over to Mac, I never downloaded it again. I actually used the Photoshop years ago whenever I was still doing wedding photography and so I was learning and knowing that Photoshop was what I really needed to be able to create those t-shirts but in my research somehow or another I landed upon YouTube and I landed upon this particular girl's channel that was talking about her t-shirt designs and how she, her process was and her channel is mainly geared off of life as a designer and her name is Charlie Marie and she's actually been a huge inspiration to me and so I kind of started watching her channel and just like listen to her and I'm like I'm digging this like I'm really enjoying watching her channel so here I go from Roman Atwood for a year year and a half to keep pushing forward past some of the things that he's that the Lord's brought me through of creating and pushing forward to shine and I land upon Charlie Marie's channel. And so I was really getting ready to do some t-shirt designs. And, but I kept hearing him, you know, whisper something else like, no, actually, I've got something more for you. I'm like, wait, you led me to the t-shirt stuff. I mean, are you serious? Is this what you want me to be doing? So I continue over the next course of a few days listening and praying and you know doing my everyday normal stuff as a mother and a wife so whenever I continue watching like these other youtubers and thinking about the t-shirt designs and listening to him and praying and seeking his guidance and everything he said for so long you have been working on building your your blog and now that you're away from writing a book and now that you're away from so many other things and I've got you still and quiet and it's just me and you I want you to focus on making videos you pour so much of your time and energy into these different social medias Facebook where you write these words out there in encouragement or um, on Instagram the the new thing last year for me was the um, videos on your storyline and he was like, I want you to create something that is a video to where you can express who you are that I've created you to be and use your thoughts and words that I lay upon your heart 
and use all your skills that you've gained in the past and like combine everything and not sit just behind a screen where you're typing words on a blog that are just words for people to read. I want you front and center, face to face with those people and I want you to make videos and share your everyday life. Nothing fancy, but your everyday life to show them what true life looks like. I was taken back. I was like, you want me to be a YouTuber? I like questioned all these other people that I was starting to see that they did because like once I got into getting familiar with Roman Atwood, like I would see that there were other people doing it, but I didn't realize how many. So I was like, okay, Lord, I'm listening. He, he kept telling me, I want you to create something that is lasting. Not on a storyline where you put it up and in 24 hours, my, my, the creation that you did or took a video of or took a picture of and the words that I inspired upon your heart to be somewhere that only lasts 24 hours and it go away. I want you creating something face to face with the people of the world that will be lasting. And so here I am, here I am as a YouTuber, Ashley Murphy, sub it, you were made to shine. And so whenever I say it is put as you're made to shine, whenever I started getting ready um, to start the channel and was leading into his guidance, I did a little uh, research to get acquainted with like the layout and how things usually roll on, on YouTube and everything. And I had worked with video and editing and, and softwares and stuff in the past because, like I said, I used to be a wedding photographer. And so I would make videos and sync music with those and everything. So diving into that was just a piece of cake for me. So I wanted to do something that would create and resemble like a TV channel, so to speak. And so... I painted with watercolors, and you've probably seen it on my channel, my thumbnails and stuff, was this actual TV. Well, not only did I know that it would be like a TV channel, so to speak, and like watching a video, I, um, he kept a lot laying upon uh, words on my heart. And something that he has instilled in me for a very, very long time. And if you've followed me on other things or walked through the journey of me hosting the art auction the past two years, you know shine is my word. So, that's how I came up with You Were Made to Shine. Because not only is shine, you know, like the word that I've used in the past and that thing, but like we're all made to shine. And by that, what I mean how the word shine first become on my heart was a couple years ago whenever I was getting ready for a solid art auction. He laid upon shining a ray of hope into the cancer community. So that word has just kind of stuck with me. But where the verse came from was Matthew 5, 16. Um, so I'm going to read a couple verses for you. And actually I'm going to start with Matthew 5, 13. So it says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and give and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And I also want to read some of the bottom footnotes out of my life application Bible. And I'm going to start back with the thir verse 13. It says, If a seasoning has no flavor, it has no value. If Christians make no effort to affect the world around, around them, they are little value to God. If we are too much like the world, we are worthless. Christians should not blend in with everyone else. 
Instead, we should affect others positively. Just as seasoning brings out the best flavor in food, can you hide a city that is sitting on a top of a hill? Its lights at night can be seen for miles. If we live for Christ, we will glow like lights. Showing others what Christ is like, we hide our light by being quiet when, when we should speak, going along with the crowd, denying the light, letting sin dim our light, not explaining our light to others, ignoring the needs of others. Be a beacon of truth. Don't shut your light off from the rest of the world. I mean, that's just so exciting to me to think about that we really can make a difference in other people's life. And whenever I think about like what he put me here on this earth for, I really and truly believe that that's what he put me here for is to be a positive influence in other people's lives and to be an encouragement to others daily. And so like him directing me on this path to be front and center face to face with those that are watching, that just makes me smile. It makes me shine. I found those kind of interesting about, you know, we hide our light by being quiet and going along with the crowd, denying the light, letting sin dim it, and not, not explaining our light to others or ignoring the needs of others. I mean, we can be a shining light for others in our simple everyday life. And that is like where he has led me on this journey to start this channel is to continue being that light where he currently has me in this season of life and that I can be a positive influence to others to help continue shining that light for everyone. So I encourage you as well and so that's why I titled this channel You Were Made to Shine because just as I was you were too. And that is exciting to me because I want you to you know experience that and and be that light for others that he has called us to be you know to be the salt and light of the um or there you have it i've made it this far in explaining and it just makes me happy to get that out and that you can be here to experience this with me I know that he is you know actively working in my life and i hope that he is in yours you know leave a comment below and let me know how he may have spoke to you through this process of me sharing or how he may be working in your life in a you know a different situation in your life that you may be walking through or whatever I would love to hear what he has you walking through so be that light and shine to you know, anyone that comes across your path you know that can be simply through a smile a wave or speaking to the cashier even if they don't speak to you first push a buggy up into the buggy bin that somebody else may have left next to the cars there's just so many ways i hope y'all have a wonderful shiny day and i can't wait to get back here with you again next time until then see ya